Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 11 a.m. on the dot. We're getting started. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds in case any of you might want to join me this morning. First and foremost, I would like to say thank you and welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our new members. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for jumping on and joining our circle. My intention with doing these on Monday mornings is to really bring, create a circle of trust, a circle of, um, a circle of love, a circle where we can come and sit and I offer a topic and I talk a little bit about the topic and then hopefully we have some back and forth in the chat and we can expand upon the topic together. So for those of you who are joining, good morning. Welcome, wonderful to see you. Give me a little note in the chat to say, hey, I want to encourage this type of interactivity between us. And again, I wanna say welcome to all new members to our group. You are so welcome here and I'm delighted that you're here. Today, I want to talk a little bit about taking things personally. I wrote about it. Hey, good morning. Ha ha ha, good morning, Sadi. It's lovely to see you as usual. Thank you for being here. Um, so this week, I want to talk about taking things personally. I wrote about that in my vlog from last week. And I invited you to take things personally. That was the exercise. The experiment was to take things personally for a few days and or maybe a week. See how that felt. Try it on. And the reason that I invited you to do this practice is because when you start to take things personally and you are conscious of how much taking things personally affects us on every level, mind, body, spirit, and emotionally, it gets very heavy. We start to get very heavy because it's a weight. And also, there's a reason why people take things personally, because it hurts our hearts. It hurts our hearts when people say something that is unkind or not supportive. And it's an interesting phenomenon, but for a lot of us, we tend to take things on more when it's a negative comment and less when people tend to give us a positive comment. I find that very interesting. It's, I've, I've seen this. It's been true for me, too, in the past. Um, but it's interesting to see how we tend to take things uh, very much to heart when it's negative. And yet, when we are supported or encouraged and told something uh, wonderful or a compliment, a lot of the time, it's a little bit uncomfortable to accept a compliment or a kindness from another. So I want to turn that entire philosophy on its head. I want to invite you to start to see, first of all, to see the good in others, to see the pain in others, because when people tell us things that are hurtful, it's always, always a reflection of the person that is giving that information. It is a projection. So this week I had, um, actually, no, just on Facebook, just this morning or yesterday, one uh, of a beautiful, beautiful person in my life uh, was told something um, unkind. And of course, you know, she wrote about it and said, oh, this person said this to me and it, you know, was really unkind. And all of the comments in the Facebook posts were about, oh, that's unacceptable. And, you know, how dare they tell you something like this? And this is true, right? How dare someone tell us something that is not supportive and loving and kind? And at the same time, what responsibility do we take to not take on negative impositions like this? 
we also have a responsibility in that exchange. And my whole, my whole focus in life and what I practice myself every day is to really practice becoming uh, more resilient like a bamboo, right? So we don't crack, we don't break, right? We're like a bamboo, we move, we're flexible, meaning that we have a sense of who we are, we have an anchor, we have a central tendon, we are grounded. It doesn't mean that we are accepting abuse, we're not accepting abuse. But here's the thing, if somebody says something to you that is unkind or hurtful, Yes, of course, there can be a reaction. There can be like, wow, that was really not nice. However, in the moment of it occurring, what responsibility do you take to respond to the person who has said something to you in a mindful, connected, resilient, aware way? I understand that for some people, that may be a little far-fetched. People will say, well, that's unrealistic, Anne-Marie. When somebody says something that is rude or, you know, not kind, there's no way that um, I should, you know, be responding from a place of mindful awareness. I completely disagree. This is when we need to become more resilient and grounded and respond in such a way that it's not about retaliation. It's not about telling them, well... You know, you're an idiot or you're this or you're that. See, the whole point of this work, the whole point of us being in circle is to develop a relationship to mindful communication as an art form because it truly is an art. It takes a long time to develop certain um, qualities that we have as artists. Communication, I would say, is at the very top of that list. And I really believe that because I see it like you see it every day in social media in the world. And why, for a large reason, we are finding ourselves in the situation we find ourselves because we are no longer communicating. We're just throwing. We're just throwing at one another. Nobody's listening. Everybody's taking things personally. Therefore, when we take things personally, it diminishes our, the strength of our connective tissue. It makes us more vulnerable. Why? Because when you take things personally and you are in a state of being hurt or pain, your resilience, instead of getting stronger, diminishes. And instead of true resilience, what occurs is an anchoring, an anchor, excuse me, an armoring, an armoring. We become armored which means, <clears throat> excuse me, that we become protective. We protect ourselves all the time, just, you know. And so this armoring is very solid, it's hard. And when we are hard and we are behind a hard surface, there's no capacity to move into this loving kindness, this lightheartedness. And you know, you will say to me, well, I'm Marie, this is not true. This is, um, this is only for those who are not kind to me and I have an armoring. But let me tell you, the armoring that you wear is not only with those people. The armoring that you wear becomes a sort of habit. And there's no way that if you are acting one way in your life with some people, that that is not also showing up on some level energetically with other people. It's just the way that it works. So my invitation to you is to practice kindness, is to practice patience, is to practice getting out of the way of toxic energy, is to practice responding in a mindful way that assumes that you are self-reliant, responsible for yourself and that you do not accept any type of negative talk or toxic talk. You don't have to accept it. The, the, the skill that I'm talking about is how do we respond to it in the moment? And that is a practice. Because when people come at us or say something debilitating, we take it personally, right? It's hurtful. And we don't know how to respond to that. So. How we do is that we usually retaliate or 
we will um, freeze. We're going back into the fight, flight, freeze response. We tend to freeze because we don't have the words, we don't have the practice into how to respond to someone who might be approaching us in a, a negative way. And so what we tend to do is we say bad things or um, curse words or something hurtful back. And so here we go procreating the same back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, where we are still not communicating. We are in a state of fight. And so the response is about, is about no, you're, you're not nice. You're not kind. You need to change. And I'm not saying that some people might not do well to integrate um, better ways of communicating, for sure. And at the same time, we can't wait on others to change. We can't wait on others to become mindful communicators. We have to take that responsibility on if we are going to choose to live a fully open, fulfilled, engaging, energetic life. It's just what it is. Anyways, let me just say it's been my experience so far. So... <clears throat> I am going to take a look at my notes. I wanted to make sure that I covered. Ah, yes. All right. Mm. So there's a big piece of this that also moves into um, when we take things personally, especially in social environments, in front of other people, there is this thing that can happen to us, which is we become offended by what people say. And what I mean by that is you've been somewhere maybe with a friend or somewhere and, and you know, someone is talking and someone will say, oh my God, did you hear what they just said? That is so offensive. You see my whole attitude. I'm getting so offended by what somebody else said. This, you becoming offended, in my opinion, is a complete waste of time. Because being offended is kind of a reason to get upset about what somebody else says. Instead of listening, realizing that it's probably inappropriate. Someone else might say something that is inappropriate in a certain environment. And it can very well be offensive. And there's a difference between something being said offensively and personally being offended. Let me explain. When you take on, when you take on another person's negativity. So someone may make a comment at me and say, oh, and Marie, um, oh, for, for example, I was, I was in the jacuzzi yesterday, right? I went to the gym, did my workout. I go into, inside of the jacuzzi and I'm, I'm, I'm alone. And then this other woman comes in and she comes in and she's staring at me like she's, you know, and I'm, and I'm not, so I kind of, you know, I smile, say hi and everything. And so she looks, you know, she looks at my birthmark. She, 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 this is my birthmark, everyone, right? So it's pretty big, right? There's my birthmark. I love it, right? My mom used to have it on her left hand. Oh, and by the way, it's my mom's birthday today. She passed away some years ago, but she's still very much alive and with me. Anyway, so my birthmark, right? So I'm in the, the jacuzzi and this other woman comes in and she says, oh, you know, is that an infection? You know, probably better for you to not be here because that doesn't look good. I could have been highly offended. I could have said like, no, that's not an infection. That's my birthmark. And why would I be in the jacuzzi if I had an infection going on? That would not make any sense, would it? So I had an option. I had an option to be offended and respond to her in a way that is less than generous. Or <clears throat> what I chose to do, excuse me, was to see behind her eyes, her concern. And, you know, if you've never seen a birthmark this size 
on a body and you're in a jacuzzi with someone, you might think that's an infection. You might think that somebody punched me. You might think I got burnt. You might think something is wrong because this is an unusual amount of birthmark to be on someone's body, isn't it? We don't see this every day. Let's put it that way. So I had an option. I could have been offended and s responded to her in the same way that she approached me, which was like, ugh, kind of like, yikes, what is that? You know, should you really be in here? Or I could have responded back and been offensive back, right? And said something like, no, why would I come in a jacuzzi with an infection? I could have had this attitude or I could simply remain calm and take a moment and realize that if you've never seen a, seen a birthmark like this, it might not be so unusual that you would be concerned, right? So by not taking it personally, I was able to respond to her and say, no, 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 this is my, this is my birthmark. And actually, my mother had it on her index finger and her thumb, right? This whole part of her left hand, she had it on her. So, and, and, and I'm the only one, we're six, I have five siblings. I'm the only one in my family who actually has the birthmark on her shoulder like this. And so the woman was like, oh, really? Wow, that's so interesting. And that kind of started us talking a little bit. And then she started talking about her body and how she's concerned about her knees and how the jacuzzi helps her knees because she can bend and on and on and on. My point is, choose the higher level. Don't get caught up in getting offended. This is a choice. We all have that choice. You can just pause. And even if someone is straight out rude to you, the practice in the moment right? The practice in the moment is to develop language, a possibility of saying to another person, oh, excuse me, this type of language is not welcomed here. And you either, and the other person either responds to that and stops, or you remove yourself from a situation. There's no need to stay in an environment where someone is being disrespectful or toxic. There really is no need. And it's much harder to respond in this way. This is why we don't do it, because we don't want to say anything back, because that would mean we will have to take full responsibility for who we are. Um, so what is interesting is that the lady was actually curious and opened enough to express her questions and curiosity, and you both created a bridge towards one another. Yes, this is true. Although her attitude was not so much of curiosity initially was more of kind of disgust, like disdain, like concern. So initially she, it wasn't just like, oh, um, you know, what's this? What's your birthmark about? It wasn't gentle. It was like, ooh, what is that? Is that an infection? So you see the difference in energy? So I appreciate the comment. Yes, we did create a bridge towards one another, because I didn't take it personally. But her initial comment to me in the, in the jacuzzi was like, yikes, is that an infection? That doesn't look good. You shouldn't be here. Those are her words, right? So if somebody says that to me, I could have been offended. I could have said, you know, no, it's not an infection. It's my birthmark. And, you know, why don't you ask in a nicer way next time, right? I could have said that. So the tone, right? All right, I see the difference in energy. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah? So the tone, when you, and, and so actually, let's go back to the beginning. When you are in a situation when you yourself might have said something to someone that might have been offensive, have you ever, is anybody, anybody here, has anyone here ever said something that might not have been kind or nice to another person. I know I have. And in hindsight, I can look back and really dissect my approach and see that when I might have said something to someone that wasn't nice or supportive is because somewhere I got triggered by something. 
And that's what I mean by taking 100% responsibility for ourselves, to just really be able to pause and to take a little bit of a look inside our hearts and bodies and chest and notice if you ever made a quip, quip comment to someone, something that was a little bit edgy or not super kind. And then if you can remember such a moment to go back and to notice inside of your heart, hey, what was it about this that triggered me or that I would say something like that to someone? Because we do have ways of being annoyed and irritated by people, don't we? I mean, there are people in our lives that we are, they irritate us for some reason and we're not always nice to them. And being not always nice to them is also very much in the energy of the exchange. It's not just the words. It's how you react. It's how you choose to engage with someone energetically, which is why I always go back to the practice of loving kindness. It's not like we're going to be loving and kind to people all the time. We work towards that. We choose to create paths towards becoming more loving and kind. We, first of all, may want to choose to carve some space for loving kindness within ourselves, to first love ourselves, because the more you genuinely love yourself, the less prone you are to reacting to another's comments. So you'll notice that people who are dropped in to loving kindness, people who are dropped in and connected to themselves, tend to take things less personally because just don't get involved. Does that make sense? Uh, let's see. I can't even remember a time you weren't loving and kind. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it has happened. It still happens. I catch myself. And so that's, that's the game. That's the name of the game. You know, there's a lot of conversation and there's a lot of talk out there about trauma. If you're on social media, on Facebook, on, in, on um, Instagram, lots and lots and lots of people talking about trauma. And I get it. There is a lot of trauma in the world. My personal opinion and focus is to not continue to dig and bring up trauma. It doesn't mean that we can't talk about it, that we don't recognize it, that we don't move into healing ourselves. No, I think that we do need to heal ourselves. And the more that there's talk around trauma and that you come from a traumatized family and that your parents were this way and that way, and you keep reading that over and over again, both on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, there's a lot of trauma experts out there right now. And I think it's important to learn and to explore where our traumas might be. And at the same time, how much of it is truly useful? There's a point where we have to stop regurgitating, looking in the past, constantly talking about what happened to us and how unfair certain things were and trying to make sense of all of the connections and why we are how we are today. Part of that is helpful, but it's like everything else these days, it seems. There's an overabundance of everything when it comes to connecting with our emotions, about healing, about every possible type of coaching program that can support you in every area of your life. And the good part about that is that a lot of people are out there willing to help and wanting to help. And the other side of that is, in my opinion and experience, the way to heal and move forward is to get into action, is to practice mindful communication, is to really look at when you take things personally, how, how, how does that help you? How does taking things personally help you? And, you know, I'd love for you to answer uh, in the chat. How 
does taking things personally help you in your life? And I'm asking genuinely because I don't know. I really can't think of one reason how taking things personally helps us. I don't know how choosing to be offended by what someone else says is helpful. I've never seen it being helpful. I don't believe it does. I don't either. What I do think is helpful is to notice. For example, if someone says to you, uh, like, you know, my birthmark or someone might say to you, oh my God, like you've, you've aged, like, I've, you know, especially over COVID, right? We haven't seen people in a long time and you see people again and you're like, wow, you really change. Like you look a lot older. Okay. You know, that's their perception. There's a lack of boundaries from this person. There's a lack of parameters. You don't have to take it personally. You can receive it and hear it and say something like, um, yes, I suppose, you know, we all age. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter, to have a sense of humor around it. Because if you have to take everything in that people tell you, like every comment that someone says to you, it's going to diminish your life force. It's going to dim your inner light. I'm not sure that taking things personally really helps me. No, I, I'm, I'm not sure either. You know, and if you do, if you do come up with how taking things personally helps you, please share with me because I'm really sincere. I'm curious. I have never found it to be helpful. What I have found is that people who take things personally are constantly re-injuring themselves. It puts them in personal doubt. So if somebody said to me, oh my God, Anne-Marie, um, you know, you really have aged like since, since I last saw you and I'd be like, well, yeah, I'm actually older than I ever was. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I have more gray hair now. I have more lines, uh, you know, um, but why, why would I choose to take that personally? You know, I might not think that the person was very nice to say something like that. That's okay. I can think that. But am I going to let that comment, am I going to let that one comment destroy the potentiality of who I am? If somebody says to me, oh, you know, you're, wow, you know, COVID has not been good to you. You've really gained a lot of weight. You know, you, you're looking this way, you know, it's like, um, yeah, I did. I put on almost 30 pounds during COVID and I have been relentlessly trying to lose it right over the past year or whatever it is. I can't keep track anymore. And so here we go, moving right along. If I choose to take that personally, injuriously, I injure myself. They're going to move on. They're going to go on with their lives and probably continue to unconsciously hurt people by making those types of comments. But what I'm sharing with you here in this sacred circle of love, of connection, is choose not to take things personally because it doesn't help you. Choose instead to tap into your life force. Tap into everything that is glorious and amazing about you. And there is so much more of that. Why would you or I or anyone choose to invest energy in someone who says things negative, who says negative things to us? Why? Why do we choose to focus on that? And, you know, I can go into all of the, you know, psychoanalytical reasons why we do that. No, I'm just asking you, stop, punto, ya, SOS, finito, let's end it. Don't go into a whole therapeutic dialogue around the trauma, around having been spoken a certain way your entire life. I'm not saying that one cannot explore to heal that. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that way too much time is invested in trying to figure out why someone would look at me and say that I look older. I don't know. Maybe they feel older. Maybe they feel inappropriate and it's a direct projection. Maybe that's possible. But I'm not going to waste 
one second of my precious life taking what somebody else is going to tell me in a way that is unkind or minimizing. Instead, you know, the truth is I'm going to practice enlivening, cultivating my heart of compassion. I'm going to practice cultivating my heart of compassion, even if the comment hurt. Because I don't want to live in hurt. I don't want to live in hurt. I want to live in possibility. I want to live in openness. I want to live in what's possible for me. How can I be better in this lifetime? How can I help you be better? How can you help me be better? Does that make sense? I'm going to take a look at the comment. If I believe that if someone says something that I might take personally, it says much more about them than it does about me. I tell my kids that all the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for some reason, let me go here on Facebook land. Facebook land, Facebook land. I'm trying to connect with who is here communicating with me right now. la di da di da di da di da All right, I can't see who wrote that comment. If you want to share me your name, I would love that. Who wrote that? Yes, it does make sense. Thank you. So who wrote about their child here? I tell my kids about that all the time. I love that comment because, Jenny, ah, love you, Jenny. Thank you for being here. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the names up. Um, yes, and there's a difference between adults and children, aren't there? So thank you so much for that comment, Jenny. So when we have children, children are much more malleable. They're much more porous. So if there's a mean kid at school who is unkind and says that to your child, well, yes, that's different. I was particularly um, addressing adults in what I was just sharing. But thanks, Jenny, for bringing that to my awareness. That's exactly right. If you have children, you do have to tell them something. And it's very hard with children, right? Because how can you tell them, well, it's a projection of them. You know, they said something mean to you, but it's really how they feel about themselves. That can take a moment. Um, and I'm certainly not a child specialist. And I bow to all of you who have children and who have to deal with that. Because that's hard. Because there are lots of kids who are not kind. And where do you think that comes from? And we can tell so much by how children communicate with one another. And sometimes kid, kids just go through being kids. Kids sometimes are not nice, even though they come from an amazing family. That happens too. Overall, taking things personally is going to diminish your self-confidence because you're always going to be looking around to see what people think about you. Somebody once said to me, Anne-Marie, what you think of yourself is none of your business. <laughs> and I thought, I have to think about that one for a moment. What I think of myself is none of my business, okay? And I kind of just let that simmer, and I want you to do the same. Just take it on and see. What you think of you is none of your business. And I think what that meant was it's all the inner chatter of how I should be more this way or how I should be more that way or also, um, you know, how I should be in social circles or the kinds of words I should use or the way I should present myself. Basta, yeah. I am who I am. You are who you are. Claim that. Claim it. Claim your energy. Claim how you are in life instead of trying to fix and adjust and address. And this is why I'm telling you that you know, what I see, and I'm much more on social media than I've ever been, actually, partly because I'm doing these now, but I'm on Instagram and I'm seeing all of this, like, great, wise, um, uh, you know, advice and information from people who are saying, oh, you know, uh, you know, be this way or be that way. And I think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, if you don't chop wood and carry water... If you don't practice every day being kind, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of reasons to not be kind, aren't there? Anybody? Can I get an amen? 
there are lots of reasons to not be kind. People are not nice a lot of the time. People are not nice a lot of the time. People are abusive. People say weird things. Well, yeah, it's a projection of who they are. And for us, the one on this side who is working day and night, who's practicing their meditation, who's sitting in, in silence, who's contemplating, who's enlivening themselves from the inside out, who's doing all of the right things to be, be becoming better in the world, for those of us who are practicing doing our best, what do we do with those people who are unkind? That's what I'm talking about. There's nothing for us to do about it. What we do is we take care of ourselves and we learn how to communicate from a space of mindful awareness. If someone says something to you that is negative or hurtful as an adult, and I'm going to, you know, really accentuate that as an adult, it's to learn how to respond when it's appropriate, because sometimes it's not even appropriate. Just, hey, if somebody's not kind, somebody's energetically abusive, my suggestion is to turn and walk away. Don't stay in environments of toxicity as much as possible, right? It's not always possible. Sometimes we are in those environments. So when we have to respond in environments that are toxic, how do you do that? Well, that's what I'm talking about in terms of practicing every single day, your level of resiliency and learning how to use the right language to respond in a way that is non-offended, right? That you're not coming from a place of like sucking your teeth from here to Alabama and wanting to respond or bite back. It's not working. The biting back is not working. I'm telling you. It's only depleting us from our essential energy. So when I'm fit spiritually, Al, I can choose to be kind, to interrupt the reflex, to respond in kind. Beautiful. That's exactly right. I love that. When I'm fit spiritually, when we're also fit physically, by the way, fit physically, fit mentally, fit spiritually, fit physiologically, it's, it makes a difference because you can see how people are out of alignment, how people are needing, needing, needing so much help and support. And a lot of the time when people reach out, they actually want help and support, but it comes across as um, some sort of ne negative comment around how you maneuver or organize or live your life or raise your children or respond in a certain way. Have you, any of you ever had that, that experience? I know I get it sometimes in my work because, you know, people will reach out to work with me either, you know, with body alignment or mind body alignment or healing sessions or even coaching. And people will show up and kind of um, ask questions in an indirect way they don't know how to ask certain questions. And a lot of the time they're in pain. And because they're in pain, there's a sort of projection upon me in terms of how I'm handling things or how I might be answering a question. And it kind of is distorted. So the practice of clarity, of standing in your line, of opening your heart, of coming from a place of loving kindness, which, by the way, is not easy work. I don't know about you, but practicing loving kindness every day and opening up my heart of compassion, it's not easy work. It's a very conscious choice because a lot of people are simply not kind. They don't have that type of education. But because I know this and because I'm working on myself and you're working on yourself, I don't really have a right to judge the other person, even if they're not kind. I don't really have the right. You know why? Because I don't know what their life situation is. I don't know where they come from. I don't know how they were spoken to, excuse me, as a child. You know, um, I don't know if they went through a divorce. I don't know if um, their best friend died or their pet died, right? There are so many reasons why people can be unkind. It doesn't excuse them. I am just 
wanting to share and empower you to stand in your line, to see with clear eyes what's going on so that you might not get caught in to the net of self-defense, of becoming offended because somebody said this, oh, but, you know, this kind of thing. Dude, just that is a lot of energy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So to have a more gentle, kind, open disposition. And now notice, I'm saying this, and at the same time, I'm super energetic, right? Like I've always been. I'm, I'm just energetic. I'm direct, right? There's a lot of life, life coursing through me. And so it, 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 it's a lot, right? Like sometimes people are like, oh my God, you know, there's a lot of energy. Yeah, that's who I am. So what I'm saying to you is being kind and compassionate and having a mindful approach to communication doesn't mean that you're a wallflower. No, God knows I'm not a wallflower. And at the same time, I really, really in the depth of my heart, I really want to be kind to people. I want to be loving with people. I want to be supportive of people, even, even when they are toxic or negative. I'm not going to go and change their lives. I'm not going to go and uh, infiltrate myself into making them better. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that in the heat of the moment, in the space of confrontation, if somebody says something to me that is unkind or rude or, you know, uh, any, anything, I don't, I have a decision to make in that moment. I have a choice as to how to respond. That's what I'm talking about. Personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. To not allow yourself to get caught up in the drama of the other. And sometimes, as you know, I'm sure all of you who are here, it's really hard to not get caught up in, per in people's drama. It's especially hard if it's happening in a familiar family environment. You may not agree with your family members on a variety of things. Does that mean that you have to get in a constant confrontation with them? No. Does it mean that you might need to take some space and establish your parameters more clearly? Yes. And establishing parameters with more clarity is more difficult than saying, for example, that's it, I'm done with them. I'm never talking to them again. Okay. I mean, sometimes... There is that part that might be necessary. What I'm saying is that if you do choose to eliminate people from your life, right, because they're constantly negative or toxic, um, to do it in a way where you're still <laughs> loving and kind, do you know what I mean? So that you're not kind of retaliating back and saying, that's it, I'm done, they're crazy, I'm out of here. This language is not helpful, even if it's true, <laughs> even if it's true. What I want to invite you to practice and consider, and listen, I'm just offering possibility here, okay? I'm just suggesting, you don't have to take any of it on, but try it out. I mean, as long as we're here together, might as well try it on, right? So when you have to kind of create space between you and people, right? Because people can be continuously um, negative and hurtful. And one of the ways to not take things personally is to actually practice creating space from people who act, are constantly um, negative or toxic in your life. What I want you to practice is to create space, right? So there are parameters. And in the way that you create space is to continue to send them light. Continue to send them love instead of that mother F, you know, they're crazy, they're this, they're that. I'm not saying they're not that. That's not what we're talking about in this circle. In this circle, we're talking about how do we become more responsible for how we communicate both verbally and energetically towards those people in our lives and in our communities who are not kind. 
so you're creating parameters. You're literally physically creating space. And at the same time, we send them light. We send them love. We send them our spirit guides to help them, to heal them in that way. Because, you know, at the end of the day, here's the truth about it. We are all healers. At the end of the day, we all have the light of the universe within us. We all have the light of whatever you want to call it, God, universe. I call it Mother Nature because in nature is where I truly heal. And if I look at nature, everything I need, the seasons, the changes, death, rebirth, everything is in nature for me. So I turn to nature. I look at nature, pausing, silence, the rising sun, the silence in the morning, the chirping birds. These are all components of how we can heal ourselves. And if you decide to take those on into your heart, respect for nature, we can learn to better do that with our neighbors, with those difficult people in our lives, with people who are not kind, with people who are not kind. And so our practice, what we are choosing to do is to respond from a mindful perspective. And in what's this? This is uh, the month of August. Yeah. In the fall, I'm going to start <clears throat> another course on the art of mindful communication because I just feel it's so important to learn the exact language that needs to be used, reinforced and practiced so that we might stop taking things personally. Because as we take things personally, we really do diminish our life force. And this is the one thing, the one thing. If you're here with me today, I want to ask you, do not diminish your life force for anyone. Not for your partner, not even for your children, not even for your children, not for your family. Never diminish your life force. Instead, cultivate your inner light cultivate your inner life force by one of the ways to do it is to practice offering loving kindness <clears throat> to everyone the good the bad and the ugly and part of offering light and love and creating healthy parameters is to create space between people is to create boundaries the act of creating boundaries with people is an act of love. It's so important to get that. So many people feel like, well, <clears throat> excuse me, if I, you know, take too much space from my sister, whom, you know, we have completely differing views and I, I really don't get her. And so you kind of, you kind of um, play pretend when we are around certain people in our lives because we don't want to hurt them. I'm going to call a big, big, big BS on that one. You're not in charge of hurting someone because you're choosing to create better parameters in your life. If, you hurt, if someone is hurt by that, if you do it with kindness and awareness and conscientiousness, if someone else takes it as a personal, I'm going to take that personally, do you see how it works? Then you cannot take responsibility for them. Does this make sense? Can I get a yes, a thumbs up, something in the comments that I am making sense? And if you have a comment, please. I struggle with that, even though I know it's best for them and for me. Why? Why do you struggle with that, even though you know it's best for me and for them? What is it about it? And thank you, thank you, thank you for your comment. Whoever wrote, I struggle with that, even though I know it's best for me and for them to create space. Tell me why. Go a little bit deeper, if you will. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I know it's not easy. I'm not suggesting that any of this is easy. That's why I want to create these circles so that we can honestly look at what's real. And, you know, this type of thing takes time. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, this type of thing takes time. It doesn't happen overnight because we do love our brothers and sisters and friends, even though, you know, there, there are some lines of disconnect, right? There are tectonic plate movements, right? But listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the more we kind of hide, <clears throat> excuse me, let me take a sip. 
train to people, please. Not to rock the boat. Ah, oh, love you. Thank you. Yes. Fear of conflict. Yes. Good. Thank you for sharing that. So as a reminder, and listen, there's nothing that I'm sharing with you, by the way, that I'm not practicing myself. I'm very, very well aware that I teach and share what I most need to learn. So thank you for sharing that because it deepens the relationship and the topic, right? We can really look at that. Yeah, train to people, please, and not rock the boat. That's a big one. So may I invite a different potentiality to look at that? And instead of um, being trained to people, please, and rock the boat, let's change that language, right? Fear of conflict. Let's change that language. I'm not saying those things are not true and they're not valid. They are. This is what you're experiencing. Let's change the language, meaning it's not so much about rocking the boat, but maybe more about creating um, a waveless ocean, uh, a river without any waves, right? That we might sail on that catamaran or that boat or that canoe. So it's not so much to not rock the boat. It's more about adding a sense of um, peace on the boat. Do you see what I mean? So let me just see. It helps to hear that creating boundaries is an act of love. Yeah, that sentence lightens the guilt that could be present in those types of situations. Great. Thank you for your comment. Appreciate that very much. Yeah, so rocking the boat is... Um, one way to look at having communication, right? I don't want to rock the boat, so I'm just going to stay quiet and in my corner. What I'm inviting you in is to develop a language where you create no waves. You're in the boat. You can be in the boat. And sometimes, even like when you're flying, right, there's turbulence when we're flying, right? But rocking the boat doesn't have to be that way. You can just choose to, instead of rock the boat, maintain a sense of harmony. And maintaining a sense of harmony sometimes will require for you to express yourself in a mindful, kind, and loving way that is also honest. So yes, sometimes when we speak from a place of love and honesty from ourselves, it might be interpreted as rocking the boat. But that's not from your side if you are communicating from a place of loving kindness. Does that make sense? So it's the language that you use, right? So a fear of conflict, I get that because the other person might rebuke or might re refuse or might contest what you just said. That's human nature. So what do we do? We strengthen ourselves from the inside out we start to learn the language of mindful communication, of really offering a space where here's something that you might want to practice um, when this shows up. A very good way to get into mindful communication is to ask an open-ended question. So, for example, if you have a sibling or someone and they see things a certain way, and you see things another way, but you're practicing this mindful communication, right? You're, you're saying like, okay, I'm going to start to practice this. So what you could do that could be helpful to open up the space between the two of you is if someone says to you, um, for example, one of my friends will say to me, well, um, let me take an example. I'll take a political example because it's so juicy. So now that Trump in the United States, Donald Trump is kind of thinking about I don't know, running again for presidency. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I have a friend who will vote for Trump and says that, you know, that Trump is the way to go. He's much more intelligent. He knows how to run a, a business and a city. And, and I tend to disagree because I find that Trump's way of being, of communicating um, is sick. I think he's a sick man. Honestly, I really think he's a sick man. So instead of me saying to my friend, you're insane, Trump is sick, he's a crazy guy, I would ask my friend, 
a, a, an open-ended question and say, what is it about Trump that makes you feel like he really has a handle on, on how to run a country? Like, can you give me examples of that? Because I'm, I'm rather ignorant and I also, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't really believe that. I don't find that, um, I don't find that Trump is someone who can rule the country really well. And I'm really curious about why people might think that he is. Okay, so it might be opening up a little bit of a can of worms here. And at the same time, it's just an example, right? So it could be something else. It might be that your sister or brother um, have a certain way of raising their children that they think is the right way, and you tend to disagree. Yeah? So asking an open-ended question and maintaining space. You see, you want to maintain space between you asking that question to not get all caught up in the craziness of it. So this is why the daily practice you know, the, the self-contemplation, the meditation, the listening to information that is helpful, that will help to boost your confidence. And also, when you boost your confidence, you know, what happens to your people pleaser is that she, he diminishes. You tend to not jump in right away to please people for fear of conflict. It's a normal thing. I think most of us have that on some level. So just know you're not alone. And at the same time, to start to notice where could you create a little bit of space and ask a question that's a little bit more general to have the other person engage in such a way that is calm, but at the same time that they get to express. Because you know what happens most of the time is that people don't feel that they're heard. And that's a very common thing. We just talk and talk into the other person, but we never feel that we're heard. So this would require for you a certain level of patience, compassion, to be able to hold space for what the other person has to say. And if the other person says something that you don't believe in, you don't have to continue. You can just say something like, thanks for, thanks for sharing. You know, thanks for sharing your opinion on that. You know, it gives me food for thought. But do you see... I'm not biting. Oh my God, you know, that, that's crazy. You know, that, you know, they think that Trump is going to save whatever, whatever. Uh, it's okay. They're entitled to their opinion. I don't agree, but I don't have to bite into that same piece of bread. I can just back off and say, you know what? Thanks for sharing. You know, I, had, I never thought about it in this way. Um, and what someone else thinks of me should be none of my business. <laughs> yeah, good comment. So does this make sense, what I just shared about that piece? Not taking things personally and how to approach, not rocking the boat, fear of conflict. Practice asking more open-ended questions. Become curious about the other person. It's a really um, healthy way of engaging with someone else. And in the meantime, you become a better listener. So you are practicing the skill of listening. All right, my friends, we're almost there at the 12 o'clock mark. Any comments, questions, insights that you might want to share before we get off? Again, I want to thank all of the new members that join our group. I hope that this was helpful today. I hope you got some insight. Please continue to comment in the Facebook group because it's super helpful for other people to see what you're thinking. That's how we engage and that's how we practice the art of mindful communication. It's really healthy for us to be in a sacred circle like this where we can express how we feel if differently if we don't agree with someone else, that's perfectly fine. That's why we're here. We're here to practice a safe space where we can communicate, support one another, and be able to see behind someone else's eyes, you know, to really put ourselves in someone else's shoes and position and um, to continuously practice our heart of compassion, to open our hearts, to open our voices, and to continue, continue to do your daily work Whatever it is that you're doing, your practice, your prayer, your chanting, nature, whatever it is, do your daily work. Focus on you. Focus on you. Don't focus on them. Focus on you. What do you need to be healthy, to be held, to be loved? And this is one place where this can happen. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne-Marie, it makes sense. I'll sit with the nutrients you shared with us. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much, I can be a better listener. Yes, awesome, yes, me too. I love you. Blessings to all of you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next week. Bye.